Every activity from travel to farming leads to the emission of carbon dioxide, which contributes to the greenhouse effect, making the planet warmer and resulting in climate change. Now, world leaders created the first international carbon market with the UN's 1997 Kyoto Protocol on Climate Change. Nearly 20 years later, at the UN-led climate talks in Paris, nations worldwide backed a legally binding treaty to keep global warming capped at 1.5 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels. Now, nearly 200 signatories have committed to reducing greenhouse gases by 45% by 2030, towards an eventual goal of net zero by 2050. So where does carbon trading fit in? Well, it works by getting companies and other entities to pay for every tonne of CO2 emitted into the atmosphere. Now, there's two ways to do this. A carbon tax, which is a fixed price that must be paid for every tonne of CO2 emitted. Governments usually set a taxation level based on the fossil fuels used. The other method, and here's where the trading in carbon trading comes in, is commonly known as cap and trade. Now, it's a scheme that caps an organization's total emissions and allows it to trade any excess allocation. The EU's Emissions Trading System, or ETS, is the world's largest carbon trading market, and it's considered the benchmark for carbon trading. The ETS covers some 10,000 power stations and factories in 30 countries, as well as airlines. The EU sets the cap on the amount of CO2 that each member country can emit each year. And these allowances or units are then allocated to companies which can then be traded in the market. So, firms with a larger carbon footprint that can't meet their allowance for the year, they would have to go into the secondary market to buy extra units or credits. Vice versa, if an organization manages to reduce their emissions, they can then sell their excess units on the market. Each year, the cap also gets stricter and the shrinking pool of allowances gets more expensive, incentivizing polluters to decarbonize. The price of emission allowances, or EUA, is expected to average around €81.40 per tonne of CO2 this year. In the last 10 years, it's crept up from €23 Euros per tonne, and it peaked at €98 Euros last August. The critics say carbon trading is great in theory, but there are drawbacks in practice. Now, for example, major polluters might relocate across borders to more lenient jurisdictions. Now, that's known as carbon leakage. Penalties for infringement may also be a non-deterrent. In the EU, fines can be as low as 100 euros per excess ton. Now, that's considered not too much higher than the price of an actual unit allowance alone. So, it's not much of a deterrent. It's not a perfect solution, but as more and more countries and companies do their part, it's believed that the long road to net zero emissions by 2050 could be a shorter one. For CNA Explains, I'm Roland Lim.